Good evening. Welcome to the fourth of the expert talks being conducted as part of the Butterfly and Bee Awareness Week of 2022. We've had three inter interesting talks earlier in the week. And in case uh, any of you have missed them, the recording of the first talk, as well as those of the previous year's expert talks, are available on the YouTube channel of the Bangalore Butterfly Club. And the recordings of the remaining talks of this week too will be made available shortly on the same channel, that is Bangalore Butterfly Club channel. Before we start today, I request all the viewers to please keep yourself muted and keep your videos off during the talk. If you have any questions, they can be posted in the chat and the speaker can address them at the end of the talk. So moving on to today's expert talk, the speaker for today is Mr. Appavu Pavendan, and he will be talking to us about butterfly migration in Tamil Nadu. Mr. Pavindan from Coimbatore, Tamil Nadu, is the president of the Nature and Butterfly Society, or the TNBS. He is a postgraduate in textile engineering from Anna University, Chennai, and has over 32 years of professional experience, including serving as a scientific officer in a research association. He is currently working as the associate dean of Kumara Guru College of Technology in Coimbatore. His interest in nature includes birds and butterflies, among others, and has been keenly observing them for the past 12 years. His butterfly-related works revolved around the state of Tamil Nadu, including preparation and validation of spe uh, butterfly species checklist, butterfly surveys along with the forest de department, butterfly migration studies, and creating awareness about butterflies throughout Tamil Nadu. The key activities of the Nature and Butterfly Society, or the TNBS, in which he has been actively involved as its president, include preparing and releasing a checklist for the state of Tamil Nadu in 2016 and district-wise later on. Checklist for the district of Coimbatore has already been released. An online Facebook forum is actively, actively promoting the butterfly watching and the interest. An e-magazine called Pattam Puchi, meaning butterflies in Tamil, is being published quarterly. Along with the Tamil Nadu Forest Department, birds and butterfly surveys are being conducted in key areas like Kodakanal Wildlife Sanctuary, Coimbatore Forest Division, and Satyamangalam Tiger Reserve. Butterfly migration over the years is being studied in detail by the team. Various walks and studies, including life cycles, are also being conducted, and dissemination through seminars and webinars and supporting other NGOs is also actively being done. Mr. Pavindan has brought out books on the birds of Coimbatore, and he has also been the main contributor for booklets on butterflies that were brought out along with the Tamil Nadu Forest Department especially for the Satyamangalam Tiger Reserve. Today, we are honored to have him with us and are eagerly waiting to hear him tell us about butterfly migration in Tamil Nadu. Over to you, sir. Uh, thank you, madam, and good evening. Uh, thanks for the wonderful introduction of our uh, team and myself. And uh, very uh, uh, good evening to all the uh, participants here. I could see many familiar uh, names, some very seniors and some experts. So I hope uh, I'll be able to do some justice to all the uh, listeners today. I hope I am audible. I'm going to share my screen. We'll start the presentation. Yes, yes. you are audible. Thank you. Yeah, full screen mode is uh, there now. Uh, and today's uh, uh, topic uh, would try to cover uh, the uh, butterfly migration that happens uh, in Tamil Nadu in the recent times. Uh, before I do that, I will uh, have uh, a bit of introduction about uh, Tamil Nadu's uh, butterfly and bit on the landscape so that uh, we understand uh, later on uh, when we talk about migration, uh, you know, uh, we will be able to relate to the uh, landscape and structure. So this uh, presentation uh, mainly intended for our own understanding purpose here. Uh, I wouldn't claim uh, uh, everything uh, given here are facts. I request you to you know, verify uh, and discuss with experts before assuming all things I share here are correct. Just I am cautioning you just to have more clarity uh, from your side. 
Uh, to start with, uh, Tamil Nadu, as you know, uh, uh, it's a uh, South Indian state, 10th largest by area and 7th by population. And, uh, you know, we have the second largest uh, state economy after Maharashtra. And uh, very rich in history, culture, and not like all other states in India. Nothing uh, different from other states. Uh, and uh, Tamil uh, is a world language. Uh, like other uh, South Indian languages, and it's a classical, it has a classical language status. And uh, unique to Tamil Nadu, you will find the Sangam literature, uh, the literature which is rich in many aspects of life, uh, you know, uh, written down by various uh, poets about 2000 years uh, back. And uh, the temple styles are very unique, the Dravidian style temples, which you would find throughout the South India. Uh, this state, like other uh, South Indian states, have very high literacy rate and birth control. This is just the uh, brief introduction to the state of Tamil Nadu. And if you look at area-wise, uh, it's about 1,30,000 square kilometer. Uh, if you look at the geographical arrangement, we have the Western Ghats, Eastern Ghats, Plains. We also have the uplands, the uh, riparian uh, area, and the very long coastal area, uh, predominantly tropical uh, state and we benefit from uh, northeast and southwest monsoon more from the uh, northeast monsoon than southwest monsoon which is the case with most of the other states in uh, india but we benefit more from the northeast monsoon the forest cover is 20.31 percent uh, the target is something like 25 percent the state government has fixed a target and trying to improve this figure currently the cover uh, forest cover stands at 20.31 percent so, uh, briefly into butterflies of Tamil Nadu. As we all know, uh, India's butterfly population uh, was, was uh, you know, in the literature quoted around 1,500 plus, but uh, uh, recent works about six, seven years back, uh, it uh, revised to 1,300 plus. Now, slowly, with each and every passing month, we see some new butterflies getting added, especially from the Northeast India. So. I think we are somewhere close to 1,350, and these figures may move up further. Uh, with respect to Western Ghats, uh, uh, the recent accounts uh, give 340 plus species, and there are some more species waiting to be described. Uh, we are all eagerly waiting to hear from you know uh, people who have done the base work and uh, waiting to be published. In Tamil Nadu, uh, we might have two, three uh, accounts of uh, this uh, number. But from uh, our side, uh, you know, when we release the first checklist, uh, 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 many of the members of the exercise are here, including I see Manoj Said Madhavan. And uh, we released 323, but slowly this number uh, built up to 328 now with additional species being identified in the last few years. So including, uh, you know, uh, Tarukas Balkanica, Tarukas Indica, and few other uh, species which we didn't expect at the time of release, but they are very much now as part of uh, butterflies of Tamil Nadu. So out of this 328, we started an exercise called the validation exercise uh, in which we have uh, revalidated 321 species. And there are seven species which we are yet to, uh, you know, uh, experience directly. You might uh, surprise to see there are, uh, uh, you know, butterflies uh, like yellow jack sailor yet to be recorded. Uh, it, it should be available somewhere, but we are just searching. Also, Palni Sailor, though the name Palni is very much part of Tamil Nadu, we didn't have an opportunity to record it. And uh, similarly, Common Ciliad Blue, Tamil Work Blue, there may be a record elsewhere, but we have certain procedure of qualifying into the revalidated procedure, especially from our society, PNPS. So, although it might, one or two might be, you know, uh, validated elsewhere, uh, we are yet to bring it to our uh, structure. So, 98% of uh, the target butterflies have been already revalidated. Uh, these are some rare species from each family. Very quickly, I will go through before we get into migration. We look at Papillonidae, Fibers Wattile, Malabar Banded, Peacock. These are very rare. And uh, in the Peridae, we have the Watts Albatross, otherwise called earlier it was a Lesser Albatross, and the Painted Sawtooth. Uh, these two are uh, not very often cited in Tamil Nadu. Then there are many nymphalidae which are actually not, uh, you know, often cited, which includes uh, blue nawab, autumn leaf, and duffer, etc. Uh, so, and uh, coming to uh, uh, like any day, we have the nilgritit, 
which is again restricted to very few places. And there are some of these uh, royals, like tufted white royal, uh, which is uh, shown here in the open wing, and some rare, uh, you know, uh, Hesperidae, like uh, the yellow breasted flat, bicolor ace. These are uh, uh, some uh, rare species which we don't find often. But there are also interesting species uh, like a Malabar banded swallowtail, common banded peacock, with uh, which is, which just missed uh, you know being uh, declared as the state butterfly, which uh, the harness went to Tamil Yeoman. This common banded peacock is uh, widespread. You would find them in the Western Ghats, Eastern Ghats, as well as in the plains. And uh, we have some uh, high elevation uh, uh, specials like Nilgiri, clouded yellow, and also a mid elevation. The new species. Uh, which was described uh, in the 1990s, Nilgiri uh, grassello. Then we have this uh, uh, Shola endemics, uh, you know, red eye bush browns and red dick bush brown. And uh, we have uh, in the uh, Lycanidae. And the picture that I put it here is the abnormal silverni, is the only picture available from Tamil Nadu. This was cited from Sirwani Hills. And you see next to that is my so many tailed work blue, which is again a speciality uh, of uh, uh, Tamil Nadu. And uh, interestingly, these two uh, uh, Hesperidae uh, skippers, this uh, small spotted flat, uh, and uh, uh, all, in some areas, they are very, very uh, you know, uh, high in numbers, which would be very surprised uh, uh, you know, for the Hesperidae's behavior, usually. And abundancy, uh, the first butterfly, if you uh, drive down to Tamil Nadu, uh, one of these you should definitely see, at least on the top row, you will have the common rose, crimson rose, grass yellow, emigrant and plain tiger. And the white four ring, as you all know, is a speciality of Coimbatore and you know all adjacent uh, districts of uh, Tamil Nadu. Then uh, common Piero, lion blues are very common. And uh, another uh, uh, common but uh, speciality uh, uh, skipper, I would say, is African marble skipper. So this is just to give you an overview of you know what you can see easily, what you cannot, and you know uh, uh, what are interesting uh, species. Uh, some more on uh, the same uh, you know background. Uh, uh, we have very strong uh, presence of Euptima uh, genus. Uh, we have Palniforing, Nilgiri foring, single is firing, striated firing, and uh, uh, among this uh, only the baby firing is not uh, you know sighted often, except from the Nilgiris. Uh, otherwise, it is quite rare. But there are places in Tamil Nadu where you can almost see all of them. In some places, they are abundant. In a particular place in uh, Satyamangalam Tiger Reserve, uh, there are only single is firing and nothing else. So there are areas which are rich in you know uh, certain uh, species. Then we have the entire range of silver lines. Not, of course, the Bangalore special. We don't have the lilac. We are not fortunate. Yet. But other silver lines are very much there. Uh, in fact, all lion blues, again, uh, you know, uh, we have the full array of lion blues uh, uh, in the entire uh, uh, Western Ghats uh, showing up in full uh, bloom. Then, uh, interestingly, there are some species uh, which uh, you might have to, uh, you know, uh, look at it and uh, think. For example, uh, many people still think southern bird wing is endemic to Western Ghats, but of course, they are very much part of uh, Eastern Ghats, and you can even uh, uh, cite them in Chennai very much. And uh, again, Nilgiri tiger, many people think it is uh, Western Ghats endemic. It is very much cited in the Eastern Ghats. Palni bush brown, again, very much cited in the Eastern Ghats. Gladi bush brown, even uh, some recent books mention Gladi bush brown as Western Ghats endemic. They are very much part of Eastern Ghats. Nilgiri four ring, again, surprisingly, you will also see them in Eastern Ghats. Tamil Yeoman, uh, of course, Tamil Yeoman is present uh, both in the Western Ghats and Sri Lanka, which we all know, but it is also present in the Eastern Ghats. Many of this, uh, uh, the Western Ghats endemism got questioned by the Eastern Ghats of Tamil Nadu. They house many of these uh, butterflies, uh, uh, surprisingly. Uh, you will find uh, places like Yerkard Hills and uh, Sirumalai, Adagar Hills, uh, you know, these are the uh, uh, Eastern Ghats. Uh, uh, you know, hill ranges which house most of this. So uh, I've just listed for the general purpose, uh, the hotspots of uh, uh, Tamil Nadu, in case you would like, we can also uh, share this, you can be in touch with us, we can show you. So uh, there are uh, at least not less than 20, 25 hotspots where you can travel without anyone's help and, you know, uh, record not less than 75 to 100. Uh, uh, some of them can be as good as Siddha Pudur. I 
uh, there were a lot of discussion on that yesterday. Uh, but I think, uh, uh, like for example, uh, Manjolai in Kalakadu Mundandare Tiger Reserve in Pirnal Valley is one such beautiful place where you can see plenty of uh, you know, uh, rare butterflies. In fact, you will only see the rare butterflies there, not the regular ones. Such a, a beauty of the place. Uh, the uh, work of us is also trying to get some recognition. Uh, for example, in Coimbatore, we have two places, Sirwani Hills, which has more than you know, 250 species or so. And then Kallar, a small area, uh, it has uh, 200 species. So the uh, forest department is also keenly working now to get some you know, biodiversity status for this. If that happens, that would be the first uh, recognition uh, uh, that happens in Tamil Nadu. Maybe also it could be a role model for many of the states to declare butterfly as one of the you know, biodiversity hotspots, etc. Uh, the modalities are being worked out. Uh, nothing is uh, uh, certain, but definitely the forest department is interested. Thank you. That is for the uh, Tamil Nadu's uh, status on butterflies. Coming into my topic, uh, migration. Uh, so, taken about 15 minutes or so on the general introduction. So, migration, uh, I'll start now. Uh, before getting into the butterfly migration of Tamil Nadu, some basic uh, we will just brush through so that uh, the in relevance to the general migration, where exactly butterfly migration gets placed also, we will come to know. Uh, by definition, migration is a seasonal movement of animals from one region to another. Animals includes uh, the humans too. And uh, you know, it's uh, the movement from one part of something to another. So this is the general uh, migration. We all know uh, the various uh, interesting migration uh, that happens around the world. Uh, this is bar-tailed godwit, a beautiful uh, you know, uh, bird uh, which flies from Alaska to New Zealand, uh, you know, and it covers 11,000 kilometer in one way. Uh, and uh, some of these uh, uh, birds uh, which got uh, tracked is found to be flying non-stop for nine days. In the return journey, they probably take two more days and they have uh, stops around you know, Chinese coast and one more stop before they reach back Alaska. So this is such a you know, beauty of uh, birds migration. We all know birds migration. We all look forward to their migration during August, September. And uh, you know uh, our flyway, there are, uh, I think there are about eight flyways. I'll just to show you for the general interest. And uh, you now we fall under Central Asian uh, flyway. This is of course on the, uh, you know, Australasian uh, flyway, which is on the uh, eastern side to our flyway. There are, I think, about uh, and interestingly, uh, among the 15,000 listed uh, uh, species, some accounts show it is only 10,500 or so, 1,800 bird species are known to undertake uh, migration, and mostly from the northern hemisphere to the southern tropical hemisphere area. Uh, so these are the various uh, you know, uh, flyways, uh, and India falls under the Central Asian flyway. This bartail godwit, if you look at it, falls under the East Asian Australasian flyways. We only get these two, and sometimes we get uh, the passage migrants, which goes into East Africa, West Asia. So uh, that's uh, the birds migration. Interestingly, uh, uh, the uh, fishes do migrate, and many of you might have already aware of this. The sockeye salmon, salmon we all know, uh, the same salmon which gave the name to two of our butterflies, large salmon arab and small salmon arab, due to the color. Uh, these uh, you know, fishes, uh, they interestingly migrate. Uh, at least for uh, you know uh, in their life cycle uh, in their life cycle about uh, uh, you know 7000 miles it's very interesting what they do is uh, the uh, uh, juveniles remain in the uh, fresh water uh, until uh, you know uh, they are grown enough to move into the ocean to take the larger uh, part of their life and uh, this uh, travels through uh, this is what i'm talking about is about the canada and you know the usa on the northern american part uh, from the freshwater river system, they all uh, come down to the uh, sea, Pacific Ocean, and then they spend a large part of their life, at least up to five years, uh, in the, uh, the sea. Before they again undertake their upward journey, you might have seen a lot of this uh, National Geographic and other interesting, uh, you know, uh, videos where uh, the uh, bears tend to, uh, you know, catch the uh, salmon fishes uh, when when they move up on the river. You know, they stand like a god and try to easily take the uh, food. So these are the salmon, uh, you know, uh, fishes which do this migration. 
and there are many other fishes too they uh, undertake this kind of uh, migration journey blue whale beast uh, well known uh, well recorded uh, interestingly uh, this uh, uh, this is a full uh, you know full blown picture of course everything is taken from the net with uh, due credit uh, interestingly uh, there are two uh, well known uh, you know reserves are involved in this uh, exercise Masai Mara in Kenya, and then you have the Serengeti in the Tanzania. Uh, this uh, wild beast, it, it actually lives in this cycle. This, this is about 480 kilometer loop. And you know, for each and every season, they, they, are, they move from one place to the other place. In fact, their uh, breeding also happen in one of these places. Uh, this rotation keeps on going for years and years and years. And there are millions of these uh, build based involved in this. This is well known, well recorded. I am just giving a, a known uh, you know, reference so that uh, you know, we can relate. And of course, interestingly, we know uh, there are uh, uh, mammals uh, like elephants migrate. Elephant migration is not well known outside of uh, the forest uh, arrangement for the common people, but within the forest arrangement and scientists and who work on these mammals, elephant migration is well known and uh, we have well recorded. And this Christmas Island red crab, they are also another interesting, you know, species. They migrate in millions and millions, uh, you know. Uh, in the Christmas Island, you would say that their uh, migration is uh, timed with the uh, winter season. And especially on a full moon day, all of this will emerge and go to the uh, sea, lay the eggs. And, you know, once sufficiently the, uh, uh, the, uh, 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 the crabs, the baby crabs grow. And then again, they will migrate back to the land. And these were enjoying their life without any predation so far until such time our humans have introduced yellow crazy ant in the Christmas island and they started eating this now in large numbers. But otherwise, this is a very interesting migration that happens. Many of this I would suggest you please go through in the Googles and videos and it will be very interesting also to you know, uh, uh, take it to children and show them what's happening around the world. And coming to our segment, insects, we have grasshoppers and we have beetles, we have butterflies and moths, we have dragonflies. All of these are known for their migration and many of these you might have already heard. A desert locust, you know, it, in fact, it can create a lot of problem for the farmers. It can just, you know, eat off a large quantity of food. For example, uh, they all you know uh, fly as a swarm from one location to another location uh, and th these are very large swarms even if they just cover one square kilometer of area and eat the uh, you know, food crabs which is equivalent to 35000 people's food so they can simply create uh, you know havoc in the uh, crop system and uh, we, we all remember a couple of years back that when they tried to threaten to come into india in the large area fortunately it stopped at certain regular line so we were saved. They haven't moved much into the inlands. And uh, this again, uh, if you look at, uh, uh, you know, they follow a very systematic pattern. Uh, the players involved are the, you know, uh, uh, Eastern Africa, the Arabian Peninsula, and then the West Asian system, uh, Pakistan and India. So you would find uh, the large movements between these. So whenever there is a good rain or whenever there is a, a drought, these are uh, triggered and you can see them. Uh, Either uh, they move when their population is very high or they move when they need the uh, food uh, in large, at large. So another interesting uh, uh, migration, well known to the butterflies, in fact, uh, because many of us, I think, are part of this butterfly migration in India, which keeps track of uh, the migration that happens in all the four states. And uh, we also report uh, the movement of wandering glider, Pantala species. And uh, it has two uh, uh, migration pattern uh, in the September. It takes advantage of the northeast wind. So it moves uh, from the uh, southern part of India. Uh, you, would, uh, you would interestingly hear phrases like they are all standing in the seashores of Kerala just to you know, move into the sea and go to the uh, uh, African side. So the return migration happens uh, when the uh, southwest monsoon favors them. Uh, in one direction, probably, uh, you know, uh, a generation covers about 6,000 kilometer, maximum of 25K in the land and a definite of 3,500 kilometers in the sea. And, uh, you know, we all know Amur falcons, they try to follow this route and whenever they are hungry, uh, they just uh, feast on it. 
and in the return again uh, you know it takes the uh, route where it goes through the western part of uh, uh, india and returns to the indian mainland and many people when we talk about you know they were surprised to you know such a small uh, dragonfly can it fly towards africa they don't even believe so that's nature's wonder. and if you look at why this uh, animals migrate uh, all of us know it is for their survival and you know uh, they they are moving because their current uh, environment is very demanding extreme cold no food and no comfort and you know, they need to move to a favorable environment where they can uh, uh, you know protect themselves so they just move for the food and climate and uh, breeding of course uh, uh, some other mammals but in, the, in our case breeding is not the main reason in butterflies i am talking about but generally animals they also move for the breeding okay so how and what triggers this migration is really uh, complex and uh, you can find uh, tons and twenties of reasons the scientists are uh, uh, giving but uh, generally if you look at for example the birds you know they have certain senses of uh, the daylight getting uh, reduced and the temperature getting cold and food supplies get the shortage and you know and of course there is a genetic uh, you know trigger uh, so the birds actually uh, migrate and parents don't teach the young birds and the adult you know the so the adults don't teach the young and they have to all manage on their own and you know they just fly thousands of kilometers in fact some of the birds are known for their sight fidelity that means we can see them again and again in the same uh, place so how exactly they do this uh, is again i said it is one of the wonders and uh, you now there are uh, uh, things slowly uh, coming to our knowledge and it's a good read if if you all have time and you can go through uh, you know uh, in uh, literatures basically they use the sun's position and in the night the stars position some of them use even the earth magnetic uh, field which is also done by butterflies some of the butterflies also use the earth magnetic field and also position of sun setting and landmarks and some other have the stop over points so they know where exactly they have to fly uh, uh, next so coming to butterflies migration uh, around the world i'll just uh, you know uh, take through uh, four well known uh, butterfly migration uh, one is monarch butterfly of course we all know uh, so monarch butterflies uh, you know they can uh, Uh, they cover easily 3000 km in their migration journey in fact not once uh, one generation actually four generations are involved in the entire cycle and uh, about two three years back and a few years back everyone was worried that the monarch butterfly numbers have been greatly reducing but i think the last two years uh, it is encouraging uh, but i think uh, the iucn status has been now revised if i am correct uh, so it has been put into uh, a status where it is not a least concern so Uh, the uh, concern of this milkweed butterfly is now taken seriously and of course this is well known and everyone uh, knows about the monarch butterfly uh, as i said uh, you know you can see the cycle where uh, uh, there are specific six uh, you know arrangement of their movement you know one happens in march one in april one at the end of april so all this uh, eventually in simple terms from uh, north america they all move to central america in a specific location in uh, mexico where the area is very small but the you will see the entire uh, trees are filled with uh, these butterflies of course all of you would know that then uh, this painted lady uh, this interesting butterfly painted lady of course we too have in uh, india but uh, uh, major uh, migration of painted lady happens between africa and uh, Uh, europe especially and uh, uk uh, always keeps uh, you know uh, you know keeps monitoring the movement of painted lady in fact in a, a specific uh, year they have even you know uh, approximately uh, estimated roughly estimated uh, the number of butterflies moved into their country and number of butterflies went out especially with respect to painted lady and there were 11 million entries and 26 million exit which means they have uh, you know Done the great breeding there, and then uh, you know went back to Africa, and uh, this is one specific route of painted lady. And in another route, uh, you know, it uh, uh, comes to uh, it comes uh, from Africa to Western Asia, or sometimes Central Asia to Western Asia, and and uh, through the Indian uh, land moss, and it it reaches even Sri Lanka. So that is painted lady, and this we all know the pioneer. Uh, interestingly, this pioneer. What we may not know is pioneer migrates in millions in 
Africa. In in Africa, this but butterfly is called the brown vein white butterfly, and uh, you know uh, it happens especially around this time, December January. You can see the news. Uh, suppose somebody is close, uh, you know, watching African butterfly news, you would uh, see in sooner or later that there are news coming up that you know they see large number of brown white butterflies. You know. And uh, maybe uh, to the lost land, uh, many of these butterflies move towards Madagascar, but they don't reach Madagascar, they are all lost in the sea, which we also see in Indian condition with some of our own uh, butterfly species. You know, they move into the sea and then we don't know where they go. So, Pioneer actually makes this uh, migration in Africa. And uh, this is not our club beak, this is not our uh, uh, lobbed beak, this is not our common beak, but this is American snout, which uh, looks exactly uh, you know, similar to our uh, beak. And uh, uh, interestingly, even uh, as, uh, as back as 1921, in the year 1921, uh, they uh, say in uh, developed countries, at least like America, they keep track of uh, all these uh, movements. Of course, there's a large uh, set of people involved uh, in this exercise. In India, it's slowly catching up this migration and reporting, etc. Et so, uh, you look at the numbers in, uh, you know, uh, 25 million per minute, per minute, it's not the entire uh, uh, population, per minute such a long, uh, such a high uh, numbers are reported. And in some year, uh, the, there was a continuous movement for 18 days. In fact, they even track nowadays using, you know, radars, uh, which is good. We don't have such uh, uh, interest and facilities and we still dependent on the traditional method of, uh, you know, someone alerts me from some other location and I alert them, uh, I alert someone on the line. So, uh, uh, that is about four uh, well-known migration around the globe and uh, uh, generally, uh, you know, the uh, migrations are uh, uh, described as three types long distance long distance of course uh, we have seen the whatever we have seen i think all of those will fit into the long distance where uh, the uh, movement is uh, more than 1000 kilometers 3000 kilometers 6000 kilometers and the uh, sequence short distance uh, uh, usually if you look at uh, you know uh, uh, typical example would be our emigrant em emigrant movement people don't call it as a migration at least our own experts don't uh, you know, confirm it as a migration, but a local disbursement, uh, you know, so they just move for short distance. In uh, India, of course, even in Tamil Nadu, our experience is that Pioneer makes this uh, short distance movement and the emigrants, of course, are well known for their uh, short distance movements. Uh, dispersal, again, it's not, uh, you know, uh, uh, regular uh, when the, uh, there is, when, whenever there is a population outburst and you will see them dispersing too. Uh, you know, various uh, new locations uh, and uh, you, you won't see them repeating every year. It's not seasonal. For example, I, I will show those examples also, I will explain. So, there are three types, long distance, short distance and then there is a, a dispersal. So, one fundamental, uh, you know, uh, uh, question uh, people used to ask is, uh, you know, what is the uh, difference between a bird's migration and butterfly migration? In birds migration, the bird always returns to the origin, uh, provided, uh, you know, it is not eaten, uh, like what it, uh, what is uh, being happening in, uh, you know, some of these European countries where they catch large number of migrating uh, birds, which is unfortunate. Uh, otherwise, uh, these birds return to the origin, whereas uh, in butterfly, it is always uh, unidirectional. They never come back, only the future generations, you know, they make further journey or uh, they uh, come back. So, that's one fundamental uh, a simple difference between birds migration and butterfly migration. So, uh, from uh, these are from our uh, uh, experience. Uh, so, uh, it could vary uh, from location to location or it may vary from uh, species to species. So, please uh, have your own judgment in uh, taking these facts. Uh, so, normally we see butterflies, you know, fly uh, uh, from the height of 2 meter to 2 kilometer. Uh, many times, uh, you know, if they are thirsty, you will see them uh, flying close to the uh, land and whenever they see an you know, opportunity, they just come down and you know, take a sip and then fly again. And you can even visually see that you know, they are uh, you know, uh, moving up to the height of uh, 50 feet or 60 feet, usually uh, decided by the velocity of uh, uh, wind, the, the height. Again, speed, again, uh, from our own uh, direct observation and calculation, they can fly between 20 and 35 kilometers per hour. 
which means uh, for example if a butterfly starts from salem if it wants to reach coimbatore it uh, roughly it takes about uh, two days so uh, that is the kind of uh, speed that we uh, have it here we monitor and the movement again uh, you can see them uh, in a good uh, uh, migratory season that they are active right from the early morning if the sun is sunlight is uh, good uh, supporting and you can see them you know flying from 8 am until noon you know the peak will be somewhere around 11 11 30 12 o'clock and then it will slowly start tapering and by 3 uh, the activity will cease and you won't see them flying late in the evening at least not in the plains of uh, Tamil Nadu and then again uh, the next day you will see this happening usually the pattern of uh, migration in Tamil Nadu is in a short bus so we see them for three to five days but in different uh, places for different uh, species so landscape uh, they try to move from uh, one mountain arrangement to another mountain arrangement you know they move along the coastal line and they move uh, they take advantage of uh, the rivers and streams where they just uh, fly over them we all know how uh, the uh, uh, you know uh, albatross uh, migrate and uh, mostly they use this energy saving straight lines uh, much more uh, you know intelligent and of course, uh, we have uh, seen these two earlier, I've discussed as part of uh, birds. So they also use uh, the sunlight, polarized light, which means they can also fly during uh, you know, uh, cloudy days and using the polarized light and in the night too, some of them. In fact, uh, I think uh, I've told or I may be uh, you know, uh, having that information a little later, but I can share that. Uh, the people have observed the butterflies you know, migrate uh, you know, at the height of even two kilometers, also they have seen migrating comfortably in the night. So they also make use of the uh, Earth's magnetic field for their uh, migration. Okay, finally, uh, uh, to what's happening in uh, Tamil Nadu and uh, the uh, Western Ghats, uh, we have the Western Ghats and Eastern Ghats. These two are the key players with respect to the uh, migration. And uh, if you take uh, the Western Ghats, you know, we can generally divide into three uh, uh, broader segments and the uh, the bottom one is where uh, the uh, we are more interested and where uh, the much of the activity for us uh, uh, happens. So I've drawn a, uh, this is an imaginary line, I've drawn a line where, uh, you know, uh, uh, up to Bangalore, uh, uh, this is there. You can even draw it, uh, you know, little lower also. And on the other side, we have the Eastern Ghats. So, uh, this is the general arrangement of uh, Tamil Nadu. We have the uh, we have discussed this earlier, so I will skip it uh, for the uh, you know uh, speeding up of the process. Ah, now if you look at this Tamil Nadu arrangement, we have the Western Ghats. So from Kanyakumari to Nilgiris, and we have the Eastern Ghats from Satyamangalam Tiger Reserve up to Chennai and Tirupati. So these two are the major uh, you know. Uh, uh, arrangement of mountains in Tamil Nadu and then we have the huge Eastern Ghats block which has this Kalvarayan Hills, Javadu, Erkadu, Pachamalai. This is very interesting and uh, I would suggest to people to visit these places. Uh, uh, you know, uh, they are all uh, uh, very interesting and there are a lot of species you will be surprised to see them in huge numbers. In, in one of these places we have seen uh, on the roads plenty of uh, Judis. You know? <laughs> You normally you know, find it difficult to even see one or two Judis, but wherever you see, there are only Judis. And uh, again, this is another uh, interesting uh, complex of Eastern Ghats where Sirumalai Hills, Adagar Hills are present. This could also be the originating place of Crimson Rose uh, towards uh, Sri Lanka, which I will come a uh, little later. So out of uh, these various uh, species groups in Tamil Nadu, now I will show you a major uh, butterflies uh, movement in uh, uh, Tamil Nadu with respect to migration. Of course, like any other place, milkweed butterflies. These four are the uh, you know, uh, key players. Uh, your dark blue tiger, blue tiger. Of course, the name on the, the crow was wrong. It is a double branded crow. And then you have the common crow. If you really look at uh, the major player would be a double branded crow and dark blue tiger. In some years, you see blue tigers joining in good numbers. Some years, you see uh, common crow joining in good numbers, but usually, although we call it as crows and tigers, usually in Tamil Nadu, we see large numbers of dark blue tigers and uh, double branded crow. Otherwise, the double branded crows are not easy to sight, but very easy to uh, see when they're uh, migrating. Of course, flying tiger and striped tiger, part of this uh, Danine subfamily, but they don't uh, migrate much. 
these are the four players. And if you look at the uh, you know, pattern of migration that happens in uh, Tamil Nadu with respect to this uh, Danana, if you look at, uh, you know, this is uh, route one. I will also uh, show it little as uh, you know zonal arrangement. So this is interestingly, uh, you know, this is the well-known studied migratory route in Tamil Nadu uh, from Aircord Hills from center of uh, Tamil Nadu to the uh, Neil Greece and uh, uh, you know Coimbatore districts. It even stretches up to Anamalai. Uh, so it also uh, the reverse also happens on the same route. Uh, so one happens during the uh, uh, you know northeast monsoon. One happens during the southwest monsoon, which I think all of us know. So just before the start of uh, northeast monsoon, sometime during September October, you would see all these migrate from uh, you know. Uh, Eastern Ghats to the Western Ghats, and before the beginning of uh, Southwest Monsoon, uh, Western Ghats to Eastern Ghats movement is observed. But to tell you frankly, the numbers uh, on the reverse migration, uh, that is from the Western Ghats to Eastern Ghats, is absolutely less compared to uh, the one that migrates from Eastern Ghats to Western Ghats. This is something, it's an in interesting question for which we, can, we need to find an answer. And of course, as I said, the monsoon winds are taken and, you know, just before uh, the monsoon rain starts, these movements happen on either way. And one interesting observation I wanted to share with everyone is that, you know, we also see nowadays a pattern between uh, a good rainfall and early migration. There is no rainfall, no migration also. So we have uh, data, just I wanted to show you one interesting uh, data where uh, uh, in a particular uh, period between, you know, uh, in 2020, we had uh, you know, extremely good uh, rain during southwest monsoon, that is uh, between June and uh, August. I am giving you some figures which are phenomenal for many of these stations in Eastern Ghats and Western Ghats, one of the highest, uh, you know, uh, uh, rain in that year. In that particular year, what happened is because of this uh, high rain, so we saw, uh, of course, this is in Tamil, I also show you the English news. Uh, we saw the uh, migration from Eastern Ghats got triggered much, much earlier than the usual September, October band. The entire migration got over by July end and uh, just before the beginning of August. And uh, many from, I remember, uh, you know, uh, college from Kerala was telling, and then wait, there may be, uh, you know, further migration during September, October. I told him, no, give me, uh, given how uh, you know we see it here it may not so it happened that way there was not much a movement later on during september october so rain is one important factor which we need to understand this is a good area for many people to make a study uh, because you know we all stay as a citizen scientist but i wish there are people who take up these studies very seriously and in the year 2016 where there was no rain at all in tamil nadu there was no migration at all that was again a very interesting phenomenon all of this uh, of course, uh, the record we have part of the butterfly migration India website. We also, you know, keep a, a separate record with respect uh, with respect to the individual uh, societies. Uh, we will try to make them as uh, you know one good uh, uh, interesting paper and try to share with everyone so that everybody can uh, contribute. So we do see some pattern between uh, not only the monsoon but also pattern between rain, no rain, and the butterfly migration and their numbers this is just really uh, so that is about the milkweed and uh, very quickly on to other uh, set of uh, uh, butterflies which migrate in tamil nadu emigrant of course emigrant uh, we all know they just you know uh, during summer and during specific period they just emerge in large numbers you know lakhs and lakhs and they keep uh, traveling for uh, distance until which they are comfortable they settle down this happens on and off. You could see them uh, migrate or uh, disperse in once in two years, once in two years. But in one specific year, uh, you know, some five, six years back, we saw a large number of these emerging and then they moved uh, almost uh, on the entire western got stretched from uh, uh, Kanyakumari to uh, Nilgiris as well as uh, on this side uh, up to Chennai. That year was a great migration for immigrants. So they are known for the uh, migration. In fact, their name is uh, so. Uh, after their behavior, emigrant. And uh, uh, another butterfly, of course, these were the areas where the uh, migration of uh, uh, emigrants happen in uh, Tamil Nadu. I just put the aromat for you to understand. And uh, emigrants, even the uh, northern part of Tamil Nadu also get involved in the movement. That is between the, uh, you know, Andhra Pradesh uh, Eastern Ghats and Tamil Nadu Eastern Ghats. Also around the Chennai area. 
So that is semigrants. And uh, lion butterfly is also known to emerge in large numbers in Tamil Nadu. Yeah, one at least they follow. They try to follow some cycle once in five years, once in ten year, ten years, and then you know they move in large numbers uh, from one location to another location. In one particular year, we have seen um, millions of them flying over uh, uh, you know, Kalla River in Metapalayam uh, in Nilgiris. And then uh, crimson rose, of course, this is of recent interest. Many people were recently hooked onto the behavior, thanks to Rohit Jiroda alerting us uh, uh, in the uh, you know FB some years back, and uh, it's getting now regularly monitored. There are people uh, uh, in Kanyakumari. Uh, some of our friends are monitoring them closely. I think some more people are here uh, who got involved in this exercise. We suspect this uh, originated from uh, the Arghar Hills and uh, Trimalai Hills in. Uh, Madurai and then they move towards uh, uh, Sri Lanka. Uh, very recently, also their movement was tracked. In fact, uh, people from Sri Lanka also confirmed their uh, presence whenever we reported the movement from here. In one particular year, uh, myself and uh, Hanish, uh, you know, we were in touch with the Sri Lankan counterparts, and they confirmed that they have moved into uh, Sri Lanka. But uh, we really don't have much of the information whether they are, uh, you know, migrating back to uh, India. We don't have a great uh, Thing. There are many interesting articles and news items have come up on this recently. Please uh, Google them and search. And uh, this crimson rose is also known to migrate on the entire stretch of coastal from Chennai to, uh, you know, uh, they just moved down uh, you know, on the coastal line, Pondicherry, uh, you know, up to Point Calimer. And uh, many people on the Pelagic uh, trip also reported uh, you know, a movement of this crimson rose into the sea. We really don't know where they go. Probably they are lost uh, forever. So that is uh, crimson rose interesting moment. And then of course, common albatross, uh, you know, uh, not, we don't see much in Tamil Nadu, but we are in the fag end of their movement, uh, uh, you know, when uh, the great uh, uh, migration from Koorg uh, to Aralam, and then from Aralam, it probably comes into the Nilgiri Biosphere Reserve, uh, uh, the huge area. And uh, we are in the fag end of that, uh, you know, we see uh, at least during this time in January, February, some of them, we see them, uh, the old battered albatross uh, reaching uh, places like Metapalim and Kallar. And uh, uh, we do see uh, the painted sawtooth and the lesser albatross at the same time. So we strongly think that they are migrating uh, to this place. So Pioneer, uh, we have migration, but a short dispersal in Tamil Nadu. We are coming to the end, another uh, two, three minutes, I'll be here. Yeah ending it <laughs> in case the uh, organizers are a bit worried and uh, uh, pea blue again uh, it is known to migrate uh, in the hills we have seen during many surveys that pea blue they migrate uh, you know along the uh, hills and the great ekla is uh, known to migrate again uh, uh, along the uh, hills within the ghats denied egg fly uh, again it, it takes uh, a migration occasionally joins uh, the other uh, denied uh, butterflies Leopard again, uh, you know, casual uh, uh, species migrates. Club week are known to migrate, especially if you travel frequently in the Nilgiris, uh, which I think our friend uh, Manoj and uh, our own, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, friends like Ramana and uh, Shravan, they, they, they have all noticed uh, uh, huge numbers of, uh, you know, beak moving up and down on the hills. So they do make altitudinal movement in Nilgiris, especially. And then you have common banded all, they even join this Danane migration. They are free to join any migration. They are quite uh, you know, interesting set of uh, species. Of course, blue marmon, they are again uh, known to make altitudinal movement here. We also see southern bird wing again uh, takes a similar behavior. They do come down to the plains in certain part of the month. We see them plenty. We get reported for many plains of uh, Tamil Nadu that southern bird wing is uh, migrating. Uh, this, uh, this is another interesting set of uh, uh, guys, all these fancies in a specific year, uh, they were seen, uh, you know, in the entire city of uh, Coimbatore. It's all filled up, uh, you know. Uh, you, you see them on the road, blue pansies, peacock pansies, uh, you know, all this, except grey pansy. And that was one particular year where huge, uh, you know, pansy population migrated from Plains to the Western Ghats. So the, most of them stayed in the uh, Coimbatore city to, for a long period. And Painted Lady, of course, uh, uh, was one of the major uh, uh, player, interesting player, not high in numbers, but uh, many times uh, we have seen uh, people uh, reported uh, from uh, Satya Mangalam Tiger Reserve, Coimbatore, that they have seen hundreds of painter ladies moving uh, high on the sky. So uh, it is not easily sighted. It usually, uh, you know, travels uh, 
much higher than you know what the other uh, tigers and crows do tigers and crows fly low but this uh, fly high uh, in a particular year we also mark the movement uh, this exercise uh, some seniors here uh, you know may well know that we have done this exercise in 2019 where uh, we saw the movement uh, you know it started from you know march and then slowly uh, it moved down in june there were plenty reported in kerala karnataka and tamil nadu and finally also in sri lanka which means uh, this uh, you know uh, slowly moved uh, uh, from the uh, northern part of india to the southern part of india and these were also again tracked in tamil nadu and recorded so uh, uh, we have this uh, migration uh, you know data sheet where we our idea was to involve as many people as possible unfortunately you know we need to generate this interest and take it also to the forest department where they can support us we wanted to give this printed sheet where it was it will be easy for the forest people to just tick it and report so we would like to take it to the uh, you know top people and do this exercise we want to monitor it a little more uh, seriously and uh, maybe currently it is just a you know a approved method but we would like to take it in a more quantified way so we need more volunteers would be happy if these kind of uh, you know uh, talks help some people joining this exercise so uh, this is these are the, uh, the crows and tigers of tamil nadu uh, you know crossing us in coimbatore finally resting in silent valley silently for a few months you know before they are active and uh, taking up the next set of uh, uh, migration so that is about the migration before i uh, close it and try to open uh, uh, for questions uh, uh, i think most of it have been already briefed by uh, priya but uh, just uh, repeating for uh, the people who have joined little later so i represent nature and butterfly society which was earlier tnbs and now it's it is still tnbs but the name is nature and butterfly society and we focus uh, our works with respect to tamil nadu and uh, we maintain a checklist and we conduct awareness program and uh, this year we have declared it as uh, you know uh, year of children so we would be taking many booklets and posters free of cost to government children uh, we will be soon uh, uh, launching it in pilot cases this is already happening uh, this is entirely sponsored and we'll be happy to do this exercise this year and of course all of you are aware that we regularly you know conduct surveys along with the department uh, there will be one or two interesting surveys coming up in the next month in case some of you want to join please be in touch with us and it, it, it may be a little closer to the people who are in Karnataka and uh, there are other uh, you know uh, surveys also coming up with respect to birds. So migration we study, life cycles we study. We have a couple of young uh, boys, uh, well known uh, to many here, Deva Prakasam and Ramanasaran. They have done uh, almost uh, uh, something like uh, 150 plus uh, life cycles. And uh, some of them are uh, first time to uh, the uh, knowledge of uh, Indian, uh, uh, you know, uh, Indian condition, like for example, white four ring and one or two other uh, species. We are trying to explore new areas and get the information of butterflies and uh, nothing is secret in TNBS, whatever we, uh, you know, see the species, do the survey, we share the information. Uh, also, we try to publish it in the newspaper so that uh, it helps in the search. So this is what we do and we also have the newsletters. In case you want to reach us, uh, you can easily find us, the Nature and Butterfly Society, Tamil Nadu Butterflies. Uh, these two you can search for the Facebook. Instagram and uh, you know you can email us in case if you want to be personally in touch my name is uh, Pavindan my email ID and uh, number is given uh, thank you so much for the patient uh, uh, listening I hope I have delivered justice to all your uh, presence and passions and if you have any uh, questions uh, uh, you know uh, we can take up uh, I think uh, maybe I have taken 10 minutes more or so but I since it was a first opportunity uh, to uh, introduce uh, Tamil Nadu, maybe taken a little more than what uh, the organizers would have planned. Thank you so much. Thank you. Priya, you are on mute. Yes, sir. Thank you so much for that really enlightening talk, which was very interesting to including uh, your uh, introduction to migration itself. And uh, nice to know about all the species that have been migrating in Tamil Nadu. 
with the of course the lovely pictures as well that you had uh, shared to uh, uh, highlight them uh, so thank you so much for sharing all your knowledge and observations we have some questions not some yeah. quite a few questions so i would uh, read them out to you please to see what you can answer. Yes, okay. uh, the first question on the Tamil Nadu map, I noticed that the butterfly hotspots, hotspots are dense along the western border of Tamil Nadu. Why yeah. so? Question from HN Shankar. Uh, of course, uh, you know, we usually say uh, there are no hotspots in Western Ghats. You, know, you try to walk to any foothills <laughs> in Western Ghats, it's a hotspot. Uh, one obvious reason is that the Eastern Ghats are yet to be fully explored. That is also another objective of our society. Uh, recently, you know, we have explored uh, uh, Jawad Hills and uh, Jawad Hills, of course, has been uh, explored regularly and, uh, you know, uh, uh, Kolimalai Hills we have explored. So, a lot of exploration has to be done in Eastern Ghats. So, the more and more exploration we do, I think they will all become uh, hot spots very soon. Okay. So, of exploration, not any other reason. Eastern Ghats is as good as Western Ghats, but generally you see Eastern Ghats of Tamil Nadu as about 175 plus pieces as a maximum limit. Uh, while you would get a 200 to 250 in any good Western Ghats spot. So that would be the difference because of the uh, endemic species and other Western Ghats species. Okay, the second question by Uri, is the number of butterflies in Tamil Nadu increasing or decreasing? If it is decreasing, uh, what is the solution? Okay, so uh, with respect to the population, we don't have, uh, uh, you know, any uh, specific uh, butterflies under uh, observation, but our general experience is it is not uh, decreasing but one worrying factor is how cities are treating its landscape with respect to the uh, you know uh, plant availability uh, the rural area as well as uh, the western in fact the western gods uh, uh, to our uh, great satisfaction we have been doing our surveys even in the Coimbatore western gods for the last four years we have seen uh, any of uh, surprise reduction or absence so they are extremely good but the cityscape is really poor uh, and uh, rural areas are in, intact. So there is nothing to worry as of now. Uh, maybe we should uh, uh, you know, uh, take a representative uh, species, one populous and one rare, and keep the monitoring on a long-term basis, uh, which would be of uh, help. Of course, we need a lot of time and people to do that. We will try to do that. But as of now, my general observation, uh, they are very healthy. Thank you, sir. The next question is by Trishita Bose. What could be the genetic triggers which induces migration? I think that uh, the uh, yeah, yeah the genetic uh, trigger as i said the associated factors like you know they look for the uh, humidity level and even the uh, you know absence of their food and you know uh, you know uh, uh, their absence of uh, uh, host plant food plant and the uh, shortage of time you know there are factors which i listed which could be common for both uh, which could be common for any animal for that matter so combined all those would uh, uh, trigger and uh, many of this is also triggered by population uh, uh, you know, arrangement. For example, this uh, locust, uh, the grasshoppers, they became locust because their much population comes out. And, you know, once they uh, touch each other frequently, they know that there are more population and they try to uh, move away uh, want of, uh, you know, competition. So, uh, yeah. That's very interesting. Yeah, for a common man, it is a, a God's uh, mystery. <laughs> so, next question by, yeah. sorry. The next question by Sharda Vakil, how is the number of butterflies migrating determined in millions? Yeah, in fact, uh, 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 what we do is uh, uh, we just stand in one location. So you can't uh, travel the entire stretch. So uh, personally, what I do is, uh, you know, stand in a location. I break into 15 minutes interval. So when I know that on a day of uh, migration, even in office, I used to tell my colleagues, look, this migration, I'm going to note down, so don't worry about me. I'll stand outside and take a note and, you know, uh, every 15 minutes, we just uh, observe a band of uh, a particular uh, uh, width of uh, space and then uh, keep counting. We just keep counting. Uh, we do that. Uh, so one specific location itself for three days, in fact, my own personal observation, uh, it will be not less than one lakh. So it will be easily 60,000, 70,000. I'm just saying for two, three days. So if you look at the entire stretch, in fact, I'm saying only I'm observing for, uh, let's say, 50 meter or 100 meter. Uh, these uh, butterflies can easily migrate for the width of uh, five kilometers. In fact, uh, when it migrates in a specific route in Guayamathur, it migrates from Singyanalu to Pilameter, which is about two, three kilometers uh, width. Imagine one specific small uh, line can, uh, you know, uh, uh, move uh, uh, 60,000 to 1 lakh. If you look at the entire stretch, they'll be easily in millions. Okay. 
and uh, uh, this is our indian uh, condition uh, very poor uh, technique if you look at uh, uh, countries like uh, us they take the uh, radar pictures and they also monitor how uh, this uh, you know butterflies uh, move and then they estimate uh, you know this you know, small square area how many butterflies are there and then this spot here extrapolate uh, which are the good areas to observe tiger and crow migration in tamil nadu from manidhi Okay, I so uh, being close to uh, uh, Bangalore, I would recommend when it migrates, come and stay in Salem, <laughs> somewhere around Aircard Foothills. There are nice hotels. Nice, there should be nice resorts. So many of those will uh, move away from uh, Salem. It would be interesting to watch uh, uh, the stretch between Aircard and Salem. And uh, there are people like uh, Ilavasan. I think is also part of this discussion. I see he's there. He can be well contacted. and uh, you can see them flying and then uh, if you have a car uh, drive down on the same route as the train and bus it just moves to e road next and then to tirupur and then comes to coimbatore where we can host and then it vanishes into the western ghats and some of them migrate up to silent valley some of them take the diversion and goes towards uh, anamalai tiger reserve it goes to the valpara ebdu pet area so aircard would be a very good place selam aircard would be a very good place to see uh, numbers so you can actually follow them by road uh, yeah you can follow you can in fact uh, uh, i can quote an incident where when we did our first study in pachamalai uh, there was this curious uh, you know sub inspector uh, who uh, came and enquired you know what we were doing and then we told them that we are recording butterflies and there is this migration also you know he was so interested in fact he he, he came to enquire us <laughs> to see what we were doing and then you know after the, couple of days later or a few weeks later he uh, you know he saw this migratory movement and he traveled for 16 kilometers from 16 kilometers following the uh, uh, butterflies and then uh, he called us and updated and he also told us sir it is getting evening all the butterflies are coming down they are settling so the, such was the interest that you know you can actually follow them uh I saw last year tiger crow movement in Arupu Kote, sir. Any document yeah. here from Ragubi? Okay, so uh, in fact, we need more volunteers. So we know. I think we, one slide I haven't shown. Maybe I think for what of time I have cut down, uh, included in the presentation. Uh, Tamil Nadu, we actually broken. Uh, we have uh, you know, divided the uh, migratory movement into five zones. So there is a zone one, zone two, a zone three, zone four, zone five, and uh, you know Arbukottai falls under zone four. Uh, you know where there are uh, butterfly movements, but we need volunteers from each of these areas. This zone two, zone three is well studied. Zone one involving Chennai is also well studied. Zone five doesn't have much of the movement. Uh, that is the area around Kanyakumari and Tirunal Valley. Uh, Arbukottai, you know all those areas, uh, Rajapala, M. Stevelli, Puttur will fall in this. you know zone four we need more volunteers of course there are people but we need more volunteers to know the uh, information and if we can have more volunteers we can you know collect all the information and pass it we have quite a few questions let's see how many we can cover okay. how okay. rain is a crucial factor for butterflies corresponding with migration from trishita bos i think you talked about it in your yeah uh, i explained you know rain is very critical in a good uh, rainy uh, season immediately after uh, rain so usually the pattern is uh, uh, after a good uh, uh, rainy season let's say about uh, you know you see some 2 uh, 3 weeks gap then there are large butterflies probably because they are triggered by the fresh uh, growth of their host plant and the absence of enough predation so they just uh, you know emerge in large number and they move so rain is definitely a factor which uh, you know uh, influences migration at least in our tropical system in fact in vietnam, when uh, such uh, uh, you know uh, migration happens they even stop uh, the vehicle movement but here uh, the, unfortunately we have a lot of uh, you know road kills in uh, the uh, avinashi road uh, stretch from e road and selam also in the karur stretch we have many reports of road kills which is very unfortunate uh, next question from farooq if painted lady is migrating from african countries to our yeah. country india yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes, they are. Which you answered? Uh, no. Uh, see, uh, uh, a single species may not, uh, you know, uh, uh, may not be migrating from Africa all the way to India and Sri Lanka. Even in the pattern of, if you look at the pattern of uh, African Europe migration, there are four generations involved. Which means 
there are multiple generation involved in the movement but uh, they do uh, uh, come uh, through the west asia they enter into india and uh, you know uh, move but uh, please note we also have a resident species in india uh, with respect to painted lady we have them you know breeding here very much they are a very good, very much a resident species uh, the next uh... and one one more information on painted lady in case they are interested that's the only species which has more than 200 host plants a very generous butterfly and uh, you know it doesn't have a subspecies uh, which means uh, which clearly indicates how widespread and uh, Monogamous. Next question from Bradri. Uh, is there any difference in host species between the Eastern Guards and Western Guards? Uh, not much. I'm not a great expert of host plant, but whatever discussion with my colleagues and other people, not much. Of course, there are species which are Western Guards endemic. They use only the you know Western Guards. Some of them use only the Western Guards endemic plants. But the common species, we don't see much different. Uh, I have seen blue mormon in Tirupur. Is it migration? No, blue mormon is very much a, a common species, red, resident species. Uh, in some time, we see them, you know, good in numbers. This many people would have observed in their, when earlier discussion, you, some people would have discussed this, that in some season, you see them in large numbers, some season, you don't see them. We also see the pattern. Blue Marmon is very much part of the system, local system, uh, uh, when I say local system on the plains, but in some, sometimes you see them in good numbers, sometimes you don't see them. Not, uh, like, you know, unlike in a forest where you see them regularly, both in Western Ghats and Eastern. Plains, it's just, uh, you know, 50-50 chance. So, is there any studies done on Sirumalai or Manjamalai? Is, uh, this is a question from Anand Sundaram. Uh, Sirumalai, in fact, uh, recently we, uh, in fact, we made even a survey. Uh, there was a survey conducted by uh, the forest department along with our society, and uh, we have uh, you know recorded more than 100 species. Despite it was a cloudy day, the results are out in the public, so it was very much uh, done. Manjamalai, I do uh, not getting it. Maybe uh, Manjolai, uh, you would have mentioned if I am correct. Manjolai is in Western Ghats. I did mention. Uh, in my uh, uh, talk, uh, it has more than, uh, you know, uh, Take it off. 110 species or so. Yeah. Yes, sir. Manjole event. Okay. So, Manjole, just two days we observed more than 110 species. So, if you get a one, one week window or a season, uh, it would easily cross more than 200. Anyone in Tamil Nadu wants to see rare butterflies, like small leopard. For a small leopard, is a rare butterfly. Uh, common, uh, you know, so Malabar banded swallowtail, all those uh, were Malabar flash and uh, all the, uh, you know, the range of uh, royals, best place to have this uh, uh, Manjolai. Uh, but it's not easy to go there. You need permission from forest. Yes, sir. Next uh, question is, which districts have more butterfly species and migration from Raghu? <laughs> of course, it is a selfish answer from my side. I belong to Coimbatore. And we have uh, 286 species uh, in Coimbatore alone. Uh, probably other uh, districts have to catch up on more uh, intense uh, search of their uh, areas and record. Uh, Neil Greece would be just behind and uh, Coimbatore, of course, tops easily. In fact, Coimbatore is very unique. Even in birds, Coimbatore is a top district in uh, Tamil Nadu. It has more than 420 birds out of 500 plus. Similarly, out of 328, we have about 280 plus uh, butterflies. <laughs> So, Coimbatore is very unique. We have both birds and butterflies in very high numbers. Uh, we have uh, Mr. Shivabal raising his hand. You can unmute and uh, ask your question. Happy evening, sir. Uh, this is Rotary Shivabal. Uh, I think a uh, uh, friend of Meenakshi and uh, Ravindran Kamakshi of Tripur. Uh, okay. Okay. Both of them would have touched you, I think, regarding the Rotary's initiative. Uh, yes, to correct. Care of biodiversity. Yeah. Energy. Yes, uh, I would like to ask a question. Like, you know, what yeah. is kind of a support or help uh, people like you require from our side or the common public? As you said, you need volunteers, something like that. Uh, other yeah. than that, like, you know, what things like, you know, uh, we can take in a, a joint venture uh, so that, like, you know, say the species of butterflies as well as all, uh, uh, I mean, honeybees or whatever pollinators. Uh, I would like some expert comment from you. Like, you know, what is that we require to do at this time to save these uh, pollinators? Yeah, I think. Uh, so, uh, can I just add yeah. to that question yes, also? Uh, 
because like see you talk to us about the monarch uh, uh, migration also and it's well known that the people have been so uh, made aware educated, and have educated yeah. that yeah. the general public support it i mean they yeah yeah, yeah they, 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 they they planted a lot of uh, they planted a lot of milkweed uh, yes so general public literally hosted through their houses exactly. and gardens exactly. and so on yes Yes, so to yes. add to uh, Mr. Shivabal's question, you know, what yeah. is that, uh, what is the kind of movement we need to take so that it's not just those who are the experts who are doing this study and this thing, you know, like you talked about the police person also, you know, how we yes, yeah, yeah. added to the uh, scene, right? So like that, what are the steps we can take to make the general public get involved yeah, I and think, uh, yeah. that would help yeah. a lot in correct, correct, reducing sir. road kills? I think any of us can answer to this question. I see a lot of... Uh, seniors like Ashok Senguta are present. But uh, from my perspective, uh, it is as simple as educating the common people. That's the first thing. So what we try to do is educate the children, educate the parents who accompany children on telling them that, uh, you know, the uh, saving butterfly is not a great thing. It is as simple as keeping our own local plants intact. So we usually, what we do is we just remove the uh, local plants as weed. You know, we just simply, uh, you know, uh, kill it off. And we don't, uh, you know, uh, understand that the grass the normal grass, uh, Coimbatore is known for common tree ring. Uh, the common tree ring uh, is uh, spread from Africa to uh, India. Uh, and this is a very large distribution. And its host is a common grass that grows on, uh, you know. But we just keep uh, cleaning them. Of course, I am not saying that we have to grow uh, bushes everywhere. So let uh, we need to be aware of the common host plants of butterflies and then try to keep them in, uh, intact. Uh, like we all know the you know curry plant and you know all those uh, simple uh, lemon plants it, which can support uh, uh, some regular uh, large butterflies so uh, educating children educating uh, people and uh, for uh, the uh, uh, you know uh, institutes like uh, uh, mr sivabalan and uh, many other uh, trusts what they can do is they can sponsor uh, you know uh, city specific uh, area specific local specific uh, uh, butterfly parks they ca they can uh, set up butterfly parks in schools they can set up butterfly parks in a locality. They can set up, you know, large protected area around wetlands. Many people don't value wetlands as an important place for butterflies. In our personal observation, uh, wetlands of uh, wetlands are as critical as uh, the forest uh, with respect to, uh, you know, protecting uh, butterflies. Many butterflies you will see them only in wetlands, and uh, so protecting uh, the na the natural arrangement of uh, you know uh, wetland. Protecting the uh, uh, local plants are very critical for our butterfly. Just uh, a bit of awareness from everyone is sufficient. If there is more money, it can be uh, you know spent on awareness, not much on uh, building an infrastructure. Spent on awareness, so we can sponsor people uh, you know uh, doing this awareness program, so they can teach more people, they can uh, you know teach more children, and uh, we try to set up uh, mini butterfly parks which can act as a trigger point for uh, people to come and see and learn. I think in Tirupur already there are quite a few initiatives. Some schools are already taking up this butterfly uh, park, and we were also involved in one of those exercises. And that that can be, uh, you know, a model for uh, uh, many uh, uh, places. So more money to be spent on uh, awareness uh, to start with, and then we know where the uh, uh, you know, focus area. Yes. Thank you so much. Right Thank now, you so much. with yeah. the, the work Thank that, some, sorry. Yeah, please. You, yeah, so right now, with the work, kind of work that uh, we are all doing, whoever is here and no people known to us, we are doing it in uh, smaller groups, patches, and touching on awareness for, uh, you know, the groups that we are connected to. Uh, but maybe we can also, uh, you know, as a community of uh, butterfly lovers, think about how we can bring it to a bigger and higher level. I think I would uh, also, along with your guidance, uh, ask everyone also to think, close this day's talk by asking everyone to think about on this online, do some brainstorming, let's do some brainstorming together. Sure, so yes. we can make it on a much higher level at the country level itself. Correct. Where there is, in, fact, uh, uh, in fact, just to add, sorry to interrupt, that is migration information. There can be much more interaction. Of course, we have it on the WhatsApp, but... Uh, you know, people from Karnataka, Kerala, Tamil Nadu, Andhra, we can all sit together once in a year, you know, uh, have some conference which can be, you know, on a moving kind, one year in Kerala, one year in Karnataka, one year in Tamil Nadu, Andhra. I think all people can come together and discuss not only migration, other related aspects also. Just an idea I wanted to pass. Uh, yes. To disturb what I also meant is to, for the general public who are yeah. not really involved in the actual studies, 
but who can also start getting involved uh, to a much extra. So maybe if we involve even the government uh, of yes. each area to take uh, part in this and make them aware. I yeah, think uh, like how they're doing it for the monarch, uh, much more we can do because we have so many species migrating here. Correct, correct. So, correct and correct. we can save the road kills uh, from yes. happening and yes. do a lot of things. We have seen even uh, butterflies getting caught into sport nets and not being able to move because they, yes. they want to move in that direction only. So they don't go back even though the other side is open. Very unfortunate is we have tall buildings in Coimbatore. Many of them hit on the, uh, you know, uh, uh, glasses glasses and walls very unfortunate anyway thank you sir so let us thank all uh, come together with uh, sir's uh, guidance that he has given today and told us today about the migration in tamil nadu which also applies to the migration through the other parts of uh, uh, india as well and uh, thank you sir so for this thank lovely you. talk and uh, giving us so many interesting facts and uh, information yeah. so thank you Thank you. Before I close, I would like to uh, thank my team because whatever I spoke on behalf of my uh, TNBS uh, teams and friends. So my thanks to them because many of the input that I passed on is uh, a collective work of all our uh, team members, TNBS. Thank you so much. There were some unanswered questions. If people are interested, uh, you can pass uh, my email ID or WhatsApp number. So I will try to clarify them. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, thank you, sir. And uh, just reminding the viewers, we still have uh, 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 one more talk to go tomorrow. And uh, uh, we also have the recordings on the YouTube channel of Bangalore Butterfly Club. Club if you want to uh, revisit them or if you missed any of the previous ones, including those of the last year's expert talks. So do visit them and uh, enjoy them again. Thank you. And join us tomorrow for another talk. Thank you for the opportunity.